Hi, I'm Arnie Gunderson with Fairwinds Energy Education. Every week we get emails and phone calls asking us questions like, are the meltdowns at Fukushima Daiichi over? Have the problems been solved? Should we still be worried? The answers are no, this catastrophe is not over. No, the problems are not solved. And yes, we should continue to be very worried. Let me tell you why. Three of the nuclear cores of Fukushima Daiichi are in direct contact with groundwater. Nuclear power designers and engineers never anticipated that possibility. Nuclear reactors never shut down completely. After a uranium atom splits to create its power, the radioactive rubble left behind remains physically hot for five years. So when the earthquake and the tsunami destroyed the cooling system at Fukushima, the nuclear fuel pellets that are usually contained and suspended in nuclear fuel rods melted. And they wound up in the bottom of an eight inch thick nuclear reactor. The steel from that reactor melted too. That's called a melt through, leaving a hot nuclear core lying on the floor of the four foot thick containment. Fukushima Daiichi units one and two and three were destroyed by the heat and the radiation inside, allowing holes and cracks to form. Did the nuclear fuel melt through the concrete too? We know for sure that the Fukushima Daiichi containments are full of holes that allow groundwater to come in direct contact with each nuclear core. Whether or not the nuclear fuel melted through the containment doesn't matter to the environment or to the people of Fukushima. Unfortunately, this groundwater is still leaking in and leaking out at a rate of at least 300 tons per day. Let's put that number in perspective. This is a picture of a tanker truck. Each tanker truck carries 5,000 gallons of water, which is about 20 tons. For you to have an idea of how much 300 tons of radioactive water is, imagine filling 15 tanker trucks with radioactive contaminated water every day. Now remember that more than 1,500 days have passed since the disastrous triple meltdown at Fukushima Daiichi, and multiply that by the 15 truckloads each day. This is the equivalent of about 23,000 tanker truckloads of radioactive water that have already leaked into the Pacific Ocean. Worse yet, there's no end in sight. During the first month following Fukushima catastrophe, Fairwind said it would be imperative that Tokyo Electric stop the inflow of water to the site in order to prevent serious groundwater contamination. Think of an overflowing bathtub. During the past four years, instead of stopping the inflow of water to the site, TEPCO just keeps adding more bathtubs to collect the overflowing water. The real solution is to turn off the tap, stop the groundwater flow. As Fairwinds anticipated, the ice wall Tokyo Electric proposed is a complete failure. Groundwater experts from around the world have contacted Fairwinds many times to discuss their proven methods and technologies that would stop the inflow of water into Fukushima Daiichi site. But TEPCO and the Japanese government have continued to ignore these experts in these new technologies. There are ways to stop the groundwater. TEPCO is just not listening. Viewers keep asking Fairwinds about the difference between the meltdown at Chernobyl in the Ukraine and the triple meltdown at Fukushima Daiichi in Japan. The major difference right now is that the nuclear core at Chernobyl never came in contact with groundwater. Here's a picture of the core taken in 1987, one year after the Chernobyl disaster. 
It's called the elephant's foot. Today, almost 30 years later, if people stood in a room with the elephant's foot melted core, everyone would die in eight minutes. Unlike Chernobyl, no one knows where the three melted cores are at Fukushima Daiichi. What is known is that the three cores are in direct contact with groundwater. As the groundwater comes down the hillside and infiltrates the site, it becomes contaminated with radioactivity. Then that radioactive water continues its movement and flows out of the reactors into the surrounding area, severely contaminating the ground and other water it touches as it continues toward the ocean. The ongoing migration of extremely radioactive water at Fukushima is making the cleanup a hundred times more complicated and a hundred times more expensive than Chernobyl. To date, the cleanup of Chernobyl site has cost about three billion dollars without adding for the cost of the ongoing exclusion zone wildfires that are spewing massive amounts of radioactivity back into the atmosphere. Fukushima will cost half a trillion dollars. To date, Fukushima Daiichi not only has released the equivalent of 23,000 truckloads of radioactive water into the Pacific Ocean, but the soil under the nuclear plant is now highly radioactive as well. The expanding radioactive contamination will necessitate at least a quarter of a million truckloads of radioactive dirt to be removed. What place on earth would willingly take the waste and how would it ever be contained for a quarter of a million years? The press and scientists need to ask, why is the Ukrainian government waiting at least 100 years to attempt to decommission Chernobyl, while the Japanese government and TEPCO claim that Fukushima Daiichi will be decommissioned and dismantled during the next 30 years? Quite honestly, the answer has nothing to do with science and everything to do with politics and money. To understand Fukushima Daiichi, the press needs to follow the money. Before the Fukushima Daiichi triple meltdown, Japan's nuclear industry had 54 operating nuclear reactors. All are presently shut down. However, every nuclear reactor in Japan that has been shut down for the last four years has maintained their full staff of engineers, operators, etc., even though they produced no power during that time. Why? Where did the money come from? to pay the approximately 700 employees at each of the shutdown 50 nuclear reactors? The answer is that Japan's energy corporations borrowed tens of billions of dollars from Japan's banks in order to pay the nuclear power plant staffing during the last four years. The only way for the banks to be compensated for this tremendous cash outlay is if those shutdown nuclear plants are restarted. My contacts in Japan continue to tell me that the banks are putting enormous pressure on Japan's parliament to start up Japan's nuclear reactors so the banks can get paid back for their investment. Polls show that the vast majority of Japanese people are against restarting any nuclear reactors in Japan. In an effort to convince the Japanese people who no longer want nuclear power, that restarting these old reactors can be done cleanly and safely in earthquake fault zones and in coastlines at risk of tsunamis. Both Tokyo Electric and Japan's government are attempting to showcase the decommissioning and the dismantlement of Fukushima Daiichi site long before it's even feasible from a radiological contamination standpoint. What's the truth the Japanese people need to know? First, it's impossible to dismantle and to clean up the Fukushima Daiichi site in 30 years. It'll take longer than 100 years to do that cleanup. Second, radioactive cesium, strontium, and plutonium from the Fukushima Daiichi site will continue to bleed into the Pacific Ocean for decades because the groundwater flow is unmitigated. 
Third, the radioactive waste in at least a quarter of a million dump truck loads will have to be dumped somewhere in Japan in a shielded and contained area to prevent radiological contamination of another area in Japan. Fourth, thousands of young people involved in the decommissioning, the demolition, and the dismantlement of the highly radioactive site would receive huge radiation exposures. Fifth, the cost of cleanup of the Fukushima Daiichi triple meltdown will approach a half a trillion dollars. And finally, there's no place in Japan or in the world to store the three melted cores once they're finally removed, if it's even possible to secure and remove them. This is a technological feat that no engineer in the world has ever envisioned, since the nuclear industry never believed such a catastrophe could or would occur. I believe that the Japanese people would not approve the restart of Japan's old reactors if they were informed of how environmentally damaging, astronomically expensive, and how long the cleanup of the Fukushima Daiichi site really is. What does the world see? It sees the Japanese government and the world's nuclear industries continuing their promotion of nuclear power, while Japan's press looks on silently due to the real threat and the constraints of the Government Secrecy Act forbidding discussions of such issues. The true human, financial, and environmental costs of this nuclear power catastrophe are not publicized and discussed. I'm Arnie Gunderson for Fairwinds Energy Education, and we will keep you informed.